originally a Spanish invention and design that was quickly adopted by the Romans as a weapon of choice and remained the centurion's main weapon for approximately 600 years. Here in the 21st century, it has metamorphosized into a weighty, hard-hitting, fully loaded PCP bullpup, not for the faint-hearted or slight of build, the Hatsan Gladius. Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. Up to now I've neglected the Hatsan range of air rifles for some reason, so I feel it's time to put that right. And what better place to lose my Hatsan virginity but with the weighty, meaty and futuristic looking Gladius. If the Gladius was a meal, it would most definitely not be on the vegetarian or vegan menu. This is the mix, grill and heavy on the T-bone steak kind of dinner and would probably demand to be eaten rare. It's a heavy looking gun and is weighty, 10.2 pounds or 4.63 kilograms unscoped, which is considerable for its short gladius sword characteristic length of 34.4 inches or 874 millimeters. But this is a bullpup, so most of that weight is naturally closer to your body and easier to manage. Now there's a lot happening with this PCP and so the best place to start is probably up front, as usual. The barrel then. Well, it's quite a length at just under 19 and a half inches or 493 millimeters and is shrouded. Hatsan claim it reduces the bark by about 50% and I was quite shocked at the quietness of this rifle when I first shot it. I was expecting a Gerard Butler kind of noise. This is Sparta! Not Emma Watson. Wingardium Leviosa. But it does make this very serviceable in the field or plinking at home. Well, perhaps plinking is the wrong word. Maybe more target destroying. Anyway, let's take a close look at the rest of this all black bullpup. Below the barrel is the 255cc air cylinder with filler point up front with a rotating dust shield and the pressure gauge right on the end of the cylinder. Meaning that when you're checking the fill pressure you are looking straight into the business end of the barrel. Not a favourite build design of mine but one that is used by low and high end manufacturers alike for some strange reason. I presume its cost. Nonetheless, it shows accurately the pressure up to its ideal maximum of 200 bar and beyond. Moving back, we come to the black rubberized plastic or ballistic polymer as we now call it. It does however have a really good grippy feel to it. Not only adding to the look of this futuristic military looking gun, but also its practicality. Built onto the front of this stock are three weaver rails, sides and bottom for bipod, lasers, torches or whatever takes your fancy. The bottom rail also incorporates a swivel stud for a strap that is included with the Gladius included in its hard case. Now before we go any further, I should point out there are hard cases and there are hard cases. This is a little flexible 
when it's not closed. But when it is closed, it does the job of protecting the gun, no problem at all. In fact, the internal is molded to the shape of the gun. Unlike some far more expensive gun and case packages I've come across. This rubberized stock then, it incorporates the trigger guard and pistol grip. Further back, it also houses three spare magazines. Yeah, that's right. It comes with four magazines with the gun as standard. Above these is the adjuster for the cheek piece. Now, how many bullpups can boast one of those? Oh, and a truly adjustable butt pad at the back. Over on the right hand side of the gun is the side cocking arm. Whilst it's not a viral quality item, it is simple, effective and robust enough. And during my time with this, never skipped a beat. Above this is the magazine loading slot. Loading the magazines is simplicity itself and could be done one-handed, blindfolded, in a dark room. See? Easy. Loading it into the rifle is a twist on the BSA and Viroc method. Pull back the cocking lever, open the small bolt in front of the magazine slot, slide in your magazine, return the bolt to secure it, push the sidearm forward and you're armed and ready. The great thing is the safety in front of the trigger has automatically applied, so the gun is instantly in safe mode. On the very top then we have the rail for scopes. This is a dual rail incorporating weaver and Picatinny rail, giving you the choice. Furthermore, because it's raised position, you can use low mounts. There's no big high-rise magazine needing clearance. So what about the performance then? How does it compare to some of the bigger names in the industry when it comes to power? Let's take a look. 569. 565. 581 561 there's quite a variance there quite a spread 578 575 this is the UK version, so has to be sub 12 foot pounds. I realise there are higher power versions of this around, and I realise there's also a power adjuster on some of them. But this is a fixed power. Using out of the tin 15.89 JSBs, the spread was 20 feet per second. The average was 573 feet per second, the average power output was a healthy 11.59 foot-pounds or 15.7 joules. The maximum was 11.91 foot-pounds or 16.15 joules. The minimum power then 11.11 foot-pounds or 15 just over joules. So not so tight on the spread, but up 
on the power. Again, these were not weighed or sorted pellets that I was using. Does the spread then affect the accuracy? Well, let's take a look. Again, sadly, another windy May day in the UK to contend with during this. Not too shabby then, really. At £600 UK retail price, this comes fully loaded. Rifle, four magazines, studs, strap, case, more rails to hang stuff on than Paris Hilton has. Quiet, accurate and par enough for most jobs. I just need to get myself down the gym and practice my I am Spartan speech. <laughs> 